Welcome. You're listening to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-hosts, Vern Glenn, F.P. Santangelo Jr., and Russell Jackman on the phone. At each commercial break, we're going to ask a a sports trivia question, and uh, we're going to try this one, remembering the 2015 NBA Finals. All right? Okay. I remember. Finals coming up here, and I thought that might be kind of a fun one. Uh, when we uh, come back, we just have a little short segment here, kind of tell you what we're going to talk about. Uh, FP is going to bring up about fantasy football and sports gambling in New York. Also want to talk about uh, Kaepernick potentially to the Raiders. Um, oh, please. Come on. Well, oh, oh, I did, we can still talk about it, you know, whether it happens or not. can talk about it, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay. All okay. Right. Uh, Warriors versus Celtics. Um, you have and, to talk about the NBA Finals. Of I mean, course. Yeah, that's the topic. Yeah, that we should as, start as, that. as this show airs, we've already had one game in the books. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so you have to address it. Of course. Okay. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, if the Celtics win, they have to pay out potentially $11 million in luxury tax distribution. I bet they switch with the Warriors, and I'll tell you why. Okay, we well, bring that up in the next segment, all right? Okay, this segment of Sports Econ 101, sponsored by Pacific Private Money, still providing mortgage investments currently yielding at least 6%. And if you put $500,000 in or more, they'll bump it up to 7%. Secured by real estate. And by the way, it's liquid. All you have to do is just give 30 days notice when you want your money back. All right. Like what's uh, it like? What, liquid? Like what's in this cup? It's liquid, like what's in this cup. Yeah, it's almost uh, okay. almost like a money market account. <laughs> right. You just can't write checks against it. All right, check them out at PacificPrivateMoney.com. Stay with us. You are listening to Sports Econ 101. Don't touch that dial. We are going to be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, along with Vern Glenn, F.P. Santangelo Jr., and Russell Jackman. All right, guys, we're going to start off with uh, Celtics Warriors? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. That's where it's okay. starting about. All uh, right. Not I don't know about FP. Uh, was was not feeling great about this matchup for the Warriors. Uh, the Celtics, I would say, arguably the best defensive team in the league, comprised by guys. Any other five of them can just switch defensively. They're bigger, they're more physical, and it's the type of team that if they play better than they played against Miami, they could win this series. That's the key right there, Vern. If they, if they play better, but let's think about the two teams that they faced. I thought the Celtics were better against Miami, especially in a banged up Miami, and they still went to game seven and it still went almost to the last shot. So I like the Warriors by a lot in this one. I think they're going to have a gentleman's sweep. And I know I'm in the minority with that. A lot of people are saying Warriors in six, Warriors in seven, Celtics in six, Celtics in seven. I'm thinking the Warriors are going to have a gentleman's sweep in five games just because the Warriors – are getting healthy. They're getting Gary Payton back. They're getting Andre Iguodala back. They're getting Otto Porter Jr. back. And they just look like a more fluid, cohesive unit. Now, I think a big part of this finals is going to be how the game is going to be refereed and how much the Celtics can get away with physically. Because if they can play some bully ball and really, really play physical, then I think it's going to be a tough series. And I think the NBA will kind of allow that to happen just to make it a close and entertaining series. But I want to hear what you guys have to think about it. Well, first of all, um, you might want to check the uh, the alcohol content in the in that cup that you drink it. <laughs> hey, Vern, I don't tell it everybody what's in my cup. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, I I I I I, I get it. Uh, your, your, your Boston is this, and and the Warriors. The answer with so much talent, bunch of greyhounds on the floor, and you got Draymond Green in the middle running it at both ends, especially the, the, the plays and what they do and the motion offense and, 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 and that. What hurt Boston in that Miami series is, you know, you had guys like you know, Jalen Brown dribbling around in traffic. You had all these turnovers. You, 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 you kept Miami in the game toward the end and almost, almost gave it away, game seven. So if, if they clean those things up, they have a – puncher's chance at it, especially if the Warriors come out, start slow, and, and, and especially if the shots don't fall. Anybody? Um, I, I think I, I'm with FP on a five-game series. I, 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 from what I saw from what uh, Boston did versus Miami, the fact that they 
couldn't defend their home court in not just one, but two games. And they really should have, have cinched everything up in game six. If you can't close out your opposition like that at home, it's going to come back and bite you against the Warriors. Because the Warriors haven't lost a home game yet in the playoffs. And I don't think they're going to against Boston. Yeah, the Warriors are the fifth team to go 9-0 and at home in the playoffs before the NBA Finals start. Yeah, I think also Miami, is, is it'll take them a few more uh, days to get back to being rested again. You, you mean Miami, Boston? You mean Boston. Boston. What, what, did I, what did I say? Miami. Said Miami. Miami. Doing two doing five stuff. things at once here, yeah. Well, Miami's definitely going to get rested. Um, no, Boston, yeah, Boston's yeah. going to be – it's going to take a while for them to – you know, they're just playing seven games like that as hard as it is, you know. And they don't go very deep on their bench. They don't mm-hmm. go as deep as the Warriors go. So – uh, if, if, if you're the Warriors, run up there, run up and down the floor, make it a track meet, have Clay Thompson come off those screens, hit those buckets, yeah, and and, and make well, it a little bit been... easier on you defensively. Oh, and use your defense to create the offense. Yeah, yeah there, there's also been undervalued what the addition of Gary Payton the second will do to this lineup. They now have the backup point guard, uh, shooting guard, small forward defensively that they really needed. Um, he even got, you know, Gary Payton even got some votes for uh, a second team all defensive um, because of this effort that he did. So I think getting a piece like that, you know, you talk about Boston's defense, but you add in Gary Payton the second, and that gives them incredible versatility in the backcourt defensively. How are the Warriors going to score on the inside? Robert Williams, although he's not 100%, he could just uh, – he could just take – Do they have to? Do punch. they have to score on the inside? You know, the Warriors have done what they've done mostly by scoring on the outside. Yeah, but you know what, though? I've got, what I've if got the, to but, say but, – But, Russ, what, what if the shots don't fall and you have to create? Well, I mean, because, at some point you have to return. And they, they, they out-rebounded Dallas in that series. Okay, I've not, I've not been a big fan of Kevon Looney, but, boy, did he step up his game. He, it was incredible what he did against Dallas. You know, all, I mean, what, That's he had right. 22 rebounds and then another 20-something rebounds. And, and he, was, he was a lot more aggressive. Uh, and who's the, the best offense. rebounder on Boston that can counter that? Robert Williams? Not really. No, he's not a, that he, great. Nothing, yeah, he, he looked terrible, actually. Uh, against yeah, I mean, who's against going against to Al Horford? You think Al Horford is going to be able to stop Looney? Um, yeah. Uh, he's uh, a star. He the one. Yeah, he would be the one. He's that, old. That, uh, He's old and Looney is a lot is acting like he's like a second year player right now or third year player hey, with Russ, the energy. There's different. something to that old man strength though. I'll tell you yeah. what. I'd be surprised if Kevon Looney had the same series he did against Dallas. Yeah. I think that was like once in a lifetime series and he just played his heart out. He might have some of that chip on his shoulder though, that swagger that hey, I could do this now and maybe show up a little bit in the Celtics series, but I don't think he's going to be as dominant. So it's yeah, one be- thing that one thing that we haven't talked about yet is you know, they have the defensive player of the year. They have Marcus Smart. They're yep. going to put Marcus Smart on Steph Curry. He just his assignment will be to follow him around and chase him around wherever he goes. Remember the last time they played, Curry and Smart collided and got tangled up, and Curry ended up getting hurt and missing some time. Yep. Yeah, yeah but the Warriors have the the runner up for defensive player of the year in Draymond Green. So, you know, they, they have their own countermeasures. And he can take out someone like Horford or take out someone like uh, 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 well, Brown. What they'll have know, to do is they'll have to get Marcus inside. Smart in uh, foul trouble early. That, that, well, again, back, back to FP's point. Who is going to referee these games? How tightly yeah. will, will, will they call this game? I think that I don't think I think they'll let it be a little bit more loose and it'll be a lot more physical to give the Celtics a fighting chance, especially if it like the Warriors just come out just knocking everything down. You know what I mean? If they're just knocking threes out of the gate, they're shooting the lights out of their arena. You know that the the refs are going to kind of come in and and let them the Celtics be more physical, so that way it's a closer game. I say bring back the 1989 Pistons. Play it like play it like that. (laughs) Get a Bill. Hey, if you want, hey, if you want to go, if you want to go back. This is a rematch of the 1964 NBA Finals when the Celtics played the then San Francisco Warriors and won in five games. Mm. I was two years old. 
<laughs> a very different scene. But you, but you remember it well. But an extremely I still different remember team. the starting lineups for both teams. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to cut to a break here in just a minute. When we come back, uh, I want FP to talk about what he found about sports gambling. Because, uh, you know, it's funny, we were talking off the air just before we came on about how, like, California had the lottery and everyone thought, okay, this will be great for the schools and all that. Well, as I understand it correctly, and maybe you guys know differently, that what the federal government did was they saw this all this money coming into the state. They go, okay, well now we don't have to give you as much money. So the so the, yep. the schools really didn't didn't benefit because they gained one and then they lost the other, and it came about a, about even. And okay. don't forget, we have to talk about the luxury tax too. Uh, the luxury tax. Okay, so uh, we're talking the remembering the 2015 NBA Finals. Here's our first tri trivia question. What all-star from the Cavaliers suffered a knee injury late in game one of the 2015 NBA Finals that caused him to miss the rest of the series? Mm -hmm. Right? That's our first tr trivia question. Email uh, edward at sportsecon101.com. The answer to that question, we'll try it one more time. What all-star from the Cavaliers suffered a knee injury late in game one of the 2015 NBA Finals that caused him to miss the rest of the series? All right. Stay with us. Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Don't touch that dial. Well, welcome back to Sports Econ 101. One more time. Edward Brown here along with Vern Glenn, F.P. Santangelo Jr. and Russell Jackman. Our first trivia question was, what all-star from the Cav Cavaliers suffered a knee injury late in game one of the 2015 NBA Finals that caused him? Kyrie to Irving, my least favorite player in the NBA. <laughs> can you, yeah. can you let me finish off of it. And was that the one that, was it Zaza Pachulia or was it Bogut? Who had Zaza was on that team. Daza, where yeah. basically that's what had happened was yeah. he got into his space. In fact, isn't that the rule that they ended up changing? Wait, no, that? Well, that was Bogut, but Zaza was on the later team. That's he was the later thought. team? Okay, all right. Yeah. Zaza all right. was not on our team. But, but it was, wasn't it Bogut who, who landed in his space? And that's what caused Kyrie to... to, to, to that's what Kyrie says. That's, yeah. Well, I mean, it kind of kind of looked like it, too. Okay. Uh, let's move, moving on here. Uh, FP, why don't you bring up the, the uh, sports gambling uh, article you brought up? Yeah, guys. So New York just announced that it collected $267 million in tax revenue from sports gambling, more than any other state. And in the last two months, New Yorkers have placed $2.8 billion in sports bets. So, guys, it turns out sports gambling is pretty profitable for not only those companies out there, but for the state itself. Pretty interesting stuff. I think this means that sports gambling is going to come to a state near you pretty soon. And um, what I'm do you think of, what do you think that as a society, what do you think about that? Yeah, I'm I think concerned. Go ahead, Russ. Russ, go ahead. No, I'm really concerned. I think that it's, it's you know, I, I, I don't like sports gambling myself. I don't do it myself. I think it takes away from the enjoyment of the game because you're so worried about point spreads and and you're so worried about uh, uh, whether you're going to make money off of the game that you're not actually enjoying what's going on in the game. And, uh, uh, you know, I have a, a, a long story I can tell about uh, uh, Jack Molinas, but um, uh, who was the first guy that was kicked out of the NBA for um, uh, point shaving in 1954 because he was a fraternity brother of my uh, father's. Huh. And and so I've always had a negative view of gambling and sports, and, and I don't like it, and I'm not going to participate. But I can't stop the rest of the world from moving forwards and wasting their money on what is, I think, going to cause a, more trouble than it's going to solve problems. I, I Mr. Jackman, isn't it a choice? There's nobody, is, there's, there's well, nobody unless, holding you against it where, where you, you've got to dig into you've your got wallet. An addiction, yeah, unless you've addiction. got an addiction to it. And then it's not a choice. And there are people who are addicted to gambling. And, and it's, the, the, I'm not, thank God. I can walk away from it, but I've seen people totally destroyed by gambling. And the, generally the people who are betting, at least on the lottery, are the people who can least afford it. I mean, that's just kind that's of- That's right. A, it's, a, it's a constant thing. I just, I, I, I don't like it either really. Go ahead. Hey guys, let me butt in real quick. Yeah. You guys thought there was a lot of money in sports before? Uh, <laughs> wait yeah. until sports gambling is legalized across the country. I agree. You're going to see magnitudes of wealth you thought were not possible in sports. And we're already seeing these $500 million contracts that a, a potential Juan Soto can get, right? 
Yeah. Wait until sports gambling becomes a thing. It's insane. Yeah, talk to the Sacramento Kings about the fact that nobody ever gets hurt by sports gambling. Talk to the Sacramento Kings I don't, in 2001 I don't. and 2002. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, of I mean, course. that was... Uh, Russ. But that's okay. Yeah, the more gambling the less opportunity for corruption, for corruption, right? Yeah, <laughs> guys, let me finish. Let me finish, okay? There's going to be more money ever than before, okay? I've been in meetings with NBC Sports. The revenue we're going to get once California legalizes it in 2023, it's going to go past legislation. It should pass the flying colors. Is absurd. What the money we're going to make in the first quarter at NBC Sports is absurd. So the trickle-down effect to me and to everybody in my industry, I'm very, very happy for. It's yeah. going to benefit me personally immensely. Wow. Now... The average bet, as we were told, is between $5 and $20, okay? So that's the most average bet is between $5 and $20. People that have addiction and gambling problems obviously will spend a lot more than that. Yep. But the average is between $5 and $20, okay? So most people can handle themselves like most people can handle themselves with alcohol and marijuana being legalized and all these different things. But sure. the few people that they will become addicted to, right, it will really hurt them. The good thing is we have some infrastructure already set up, 1-800-GAMBLER, to help addiction with gambling and other ways and to help people. Now, the corruption part with, right. with Russ, this is something that's going to be huge. And I guarantee you we will have more than a few gambling scandals in the future because it's going to be impossible to regulate. Yeah. That's, just, right. that's just how it is. It's going to be I impossible. mean, it's like, like you said, it, like, you know, some people can handle their alcohol. Some people like, like uh, football pool betting at, the, at your office – you know, it's not such a big deal, right? Yeah. You know, uh, but I, I could see people uh, eventually, you know, getting, they're going to stop working because they're so addicted to their gambling. It's going to show up in their, in their work. And they're oh, that's already happened for years and years and years and decades in New York. I mean, bookies. Yeah. That, you yeah. Become and, and off track betting and all that. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah but you know what, it, 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 is it, is it really our responsibility? Well, or for, for, the, for the judgment other people make? Uh, that part of it, no. But y do you want to make it that much easier, you know, exacerbate it, right? I think corporate America is in love with capitalism. And I think, sure. I, and, and, and I've just never seen a situation where, where, where the, 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 the ones who hold the power say no to making hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, true, mm -hmm. and, and that's why you know pure capitalism does have to have. So, and I'm a I'm a I'm a, a an absolute capitalist, but you do have to have regulations because there's greed out there, and the mm -hmm. capitalists will take advantage. I mean, whenever people can take advantage, they will. That's why you, that's why you have to have government, you know, uh, some intervention. But it, but I'm not too, I'm not naive to think that this didn't happen long before we were here, and will continue way after we're gone. Yep. Yeah, it's just going to be a lot more prevalent now, and it's going to be okay. So when I was growing up, I don't know about you guys, but sports gambling, I was told never, ever to be involved in it. It's morally corrupt. You know, it's a slippery slope, all these things. Mm -hmm. it's devil's way to watch sports, basically. Right. <laughs> now, now, it's everybody gambles. I, I, I know all my friends. Have I don't. <laughs> I don't. Don't say everybody, because I don't. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, uh, most of the people I know who watch sports gamble now, and it's not an addict. It's they they say it's a rush and it's a lot of fun, but it's not like they're throwing their lives away, right? But I'm saying it's very prevalent and it's very okay. Like there's no stigma to gambling, so we'll see how society really takes this on when the next generation of sports fans grows up with all the advertisements on TV and sees, okay, well this is okay, yeah. right? This is just another way to watch sports, and then we'll see that effect on society so maybe they should have limits like you know the most you can lose in a, in a, in a on a bet is 50 they might bucks. have to go to that way eventually yeah <laughs> there, there might have to be a limit just like with alcohol you know alcohol you yeah drive. if yeah if you're point at point oh eight or more you're not allowed to do that yeah yep yeah there's there's gonna be the problem is with alcohol there's signs when people have had too much but with gambling you can't tell if somebody you know is bankrupt or, or, you know, they're betting their kids college fund. I've been in Vegas and watched people say, you know what, we're taking money out of, you know, 
our, yeah. our kids' savings account so that they can continue to gamble. And, and to Ver, Ver's point about, you know, con, how, like, you tell people what they can do or whatever, we do that all the time. What about motorcycle helmet laws? I mean, in theory, that's supposed to protect, that doesn't protect anybody else except for me wearing it, right? <clears throat> Should I have the right to not wear a helmet if I want to do it? Yeah. I mean, you know, as seatbelts, I, I have guys. to wear a seatbelt, right? Except for maybe my child who, who isn't old enough, I, I should protect that innocent person. But for me, you know, um, but, it, but I could see there being, you know, health insurance issues too. It's like, hey, wait a minute. <clears throat> if you get in a motorcycle accident and you weren't wearing a helmet and you get a head injury, we're not going to cover you, you know? I could see well, that. Then, the, 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 then, then there's the real hot button issue in America, and that is gun control. Well, they're not calling it gun control now. They're going to call it gun safety. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you guys think yeah, about safety. Kapler not? What do you guys think about Kapler not not coming out for the national anthem? Except for he did yesterday. He, he did on Memorial Day. Yes. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm, I'm but kind from of now on. He's not coming out. Yeah. Hey, uh, freedom. Well, it's, it, it's his right. It's it's his yeah. right to. I mean, this is a country where we protest. So it, it, it's his right to, to, to say, hey, you know, I, I don't like the direction of this country. I don't like the true meaning of, of our national anthem, so I'm not going to show up for it. Whether, whatever side you lean on, you have to be proud that you're an American, and then he could do something like that. Because if a coach in Russia is doing that about Ukraine, that coach doesn't exist anymore. Gone. Yep. And nobody knows what happened. Well, there are plenty of people that want Kapler gone because he won't do this. But he's not going to disappear, though. That's the, the no, government. He's not. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't appreciate a guy not, you know, being quote patriotic that way. But, but to Vern's point, you know, that's part of the whole thing about being an American. You know, is, yep. the, is the right to protest, and that's his right to protest. And, yep. and, and even awesome. though he's technically he's doing it on the job, it's. Uh, I mean, he's uh, not. He's 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 not he taking a job. knee. He's, no. he's, he's just staying in the clubhouse mm -hmm. until the anthem is over, and then he'll walk in the dugout. Which a lot of coaches already do because they're they're planning the lineup or writing the lineup. <laughs> true. <laughs> that's that's right. That is true. That's, 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 that's something a lot of people don't talk about. That's true. Yeah, okay. Davey Martinez came out, and he was like, hey, guys, I if you see me out there, it's not because I'm protesting. Like, literally every single game, I'm just not out there during the anthem. So gotcha. it happens more times. Okay, than that. fair enough. Okay, guys. In fact, they didn't used to do it many, many years ago. The, nobody came up right. with the anthem. Okay, here we go. Second trivia question. We're talking the 2015 NBA Finals. Game three of the 2015 NBA Finals was won by the Cleveland Cavaliers when an unlikely player scored 20 points while playing solid defense against Stephen Curry. Who was this player? And, mm -hmm. and, and if you don't know, then I'll give you a little bit of a hint. All right. I think I know who it is also. Stay with us. We're T-Con 101. We'll be right back. Slap. What? Hey, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown, Vern Glenn, F.P. Santangelo Jr., and Russell Jackman. All right. Game three of the 2015 NBA Finals was won by the Cleveland Cavaliers when an unlikely player scored 20 points while playing solid defense against Stephen Curry. Uh, who was this player? Russ? Anyone else want to guess? Otherwise, I think I have the answer. Go, Go Russ. Go, Russ. It's a, he was known as Deli or Della Vidova. That's right. Yeah, I was, I was going to say he was born in Australia. That, that might have given, uh, given the hint. Uh, I and played collegiately at St. Mary's. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, now he's doing nothing. <laughs> well, he's, yeah. And he's, he's been out of the league, I think, for the last three years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, FP. Yeah, let me set the table for you guys. So you might have heard over the weekend about the slap two between yes. Jock Peterson yeah. and Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham, if you don't know, slapped Jock Peterson pre-game of a Reds-Giants game. And both – all the benches cleared or whatever during batting practice. I don't even know how you say that, but they got broken up, blah, 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 over a fantasy football disagreement. Now – there was a high-stakes fantasy football league that a whole bunch of players were in last season with the San Diego Padres. Tommy Pham was with the San Diego Padres last season. And Jock Peterson, uh, being the cool guy that I've heard he is, likes to joke around and likes to get under people's skin in a, in a nice and endearing way. And he sent – As uh, Tommy Pham would say, hey, man, he talks a lot of S. 
Yeah, he talks a lot of S, but you, right. know, you could do that in an endearing way. Anyways, yeah. he sent a GIF of basically uh, a weightlifter falling yeah. over with the San Diego Padres logo over his head. And yeah. Tommy Pham didn't like that. So in pregame, he came up to him, he slapped him for something that happened over a year ago, a, a silly text message. So this thing just went viral and went nuts. And then they had another disagreement about whether you can put a player on the IR or you could, if he's out and Jeff Wilson Jr. It was the most ridiculous sports story of the year and it'll be hard to be topped. Yeah. I just, I, I've, I've just never, I mean, I'm sure it, it's, it happens, but I, yeah. I personally have never heard of guys almost coming to blows over a disagreement on fantasy football. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, Russ, you're kind of a big fantasy football guy, aren't you? Very much so. How many I've people won, have you I've slapped for recently? <laughs> exactly. No, that's ridiculous. They, they, there's no call to violence when you're playing fantasy football. It, it, it kind of reminds me of the of in the league of our own when you say there's no crying in baseball. <laughs> well, there's no slapping in fantasy football <laughs> either. <laughs> Just, <laughs> is it, is it one of the points of, of, of playing fantasy football, the, the ability to talk a lot of S among the guys in the league? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. Yeah, but, but I want everybody to hate me in that league. <laughs> but but, but if, I, if I understood correctly, though, Tommy was upset because he felt like Jock cheated somehow with this injured reserve. Play. Yeah, he thought he was, quote, unquote, messing with his money. And, guys, uh, news Yeah, he said, oh, there's a code. Yeah. He, fantasy he, he, football, yeah. He broke the code, but newsflash, guys, uh, athletes who make lots and lots of money who are ultra competitive like to put lots of money in these fantasy football leagues. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if it was like 100K, 200K at stake, something like that, where it was like pretty, pretty good money involved, right? So maybe it was a lot more high intense stakes, but listen, don't enter the league and don't put your money up if you can't handle it. That's what it is at the end of the day. Well, Word. all I can say is if we're, if we're getting people slapping people over fantasy football, wait until sports gambling gets into effect. Those slaps are going to turn into, you know, gun exchanges, I think. <laughs> well, it, those, those slaps are going to turn into the IRS showing up at your home and repossessing stuff. So it's, it's legal. So that's the, that's yeah. the difference, right? And they'll, they'll slap your bank accounts out there. Yeah, they'll slap your bank account pretty hard. You won't have uh, you won't have any uh, shitty New Yorkers with thick Italian accents coming up and whacking you. In yeah, the you won't need that. You'll yeah, have the government. How much power the IRS has? A lot of people yeah. don't realize how powerful they really are. You know, but um, under you know uh, uh, under the counter gambling is still going to go on, even with course. legalized gambling. It's just like saying that just because drugs got legalized in some cases that the black market went away. It didn't go away. Of course not. And people will still be betting under the table, you know, to avoid well, yeah, taxes. They don't so have to pay forth. the VIG, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 They won't have to pay the taxes on it. So, of yeah, course. The yeah, right. the taxes or, or the, uh, you know, the little, the little um, off And the then you, you add all that in with Bitcoin. That was another thing that I was seeing is that there's a bunch of Bitcoin operators that are trying to get involved with uh, online gambling. And it's just like, to me, the idea of you add Bitcoin and uh, legalized gambling together, I just think that's going to be a formula for disaster. We'll see what happens. We'll yeah. see what happens. But I think it's like how marijuana was legalized here in California. You had your occasional users that wanted to try it or use it for pain, uh, pain reduction. And then you had people that still went to their drug dealer that they could get it cheap and in bulk. Because so, it was a lot cheaper that way. So, so we'll, it, we'll, if it gets it if uh, sports betting gets legalized the way that it is anticipated in California, can can people just show up with a, a bag of cannabis to uh, bet on it instead of money? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> We're getting there. But but that's why they have the scales, you know. <laughs> this is what's different about sports gambling. If I'm making a hundred thousand dollar bet, right? You yep. know that those sports gambling companies are going to screenshot that bet and post it on their Twitter, and you want oh, that yeah. notoriety. Yes. It's like, hey, this is a big roller, and he's spending this money, and he's winning. Wow. You're going to want that. So they're going to want to use these companies to get the fame of, like, I know sports. You know what I mean? Casinos I see a lot already do that. Casinos. Yeah, that's a really casinos. good point. But yeah, is it, casinos is already do that. They always say, you know, look at who the big winner was. Exactly, exactly. So the, the, I think like the big, big money is still going to be shown and done the legal way. I think it's the things like baseball players saying, hey, how much you want to bet I get a home run right here between teammates? Like, yeah, I'll put yes. 
thousand on it. Yeah, I'll put a thousand on it. Yeah, yeah. Or if you're well, if, okay, but I think okay, you said that though. Uh, that's sort of almost get, kind of getting into like the Pete Rose type of situation. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up well, too. Got, yeah. Guys do that in baseball all the time though. Still, they'll, they'll have like little bets. Like uh, it was even publicly stated that the first fly ball an Angels pitcher caught, they put five hundred dollars each. Every player did on the first fly ball the pitcher would catch because the pitcher doesn't usually catch a fly ball, right? Yeah. So you see the, the pitcher catch it and he goes, hell yes. And he points at the pitcher. He's like five, 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 five. You guys owe me 500 bucks each. So yep. stuff like that happens in clubhouses, right? Yeah. But I, I can imagine uh, you're, let's say one of the three outfielders, and it's like, you know, I, I'm going to push the center fielder out of the way while I go die for this one. Hey, man, athletes this is where point shaving comes yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, that's a dangerous thing. Well, the guys do it's, that all the time. I mean, Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods and all those guys, when they go golf, think about how much money they oh. have underneath. But that, big, you know what, though, that's, that's, that's a one-on-one. -on -one. That's a one-on-one -on -one situation. And, uh, and I mean, if you're, I, I, get, I get the fact that other people might be betting on those golfers themselves. But if you're betting on yourself, like I'm going to beat you on this hole. I, I, you know, I guess the only thing is, you know, is it going to put too much pressure on you to alter the results? I, I mean, these it's, aren't a public bet though. This is between a clubhouse or between players. That's the difference. And it's technically illegal. It's technically illegal, but yeah. people, they still get away with it anyways, but that yep. was just, point. but then also you have, okay. So the fantasy football between Jock Peterson and Tommy fan, I mean, it's one sport versus the other. So theoretically it's legal right because it has nothing to do with their sport well i think that's what i yeah. launched an investigation on Tom, tommy fan because they wanted to know a little bit more than just uh what the slap was about right. and then they didn't yeah, want to like, he is guilty of simple assault he is he is guilty of simple assault sure you know i mean if i had I a, have a right to slap somebody i mean if i had a disagreement because of the code of ethics of fantasy football i mean i, I definitely would talk to the guy about it and say hey man that wasn't cool they, you know you went against the code you know sort of like when they sent out draymond green Every fantasy broke the football code by saying it's going to be boston to win you know how do you know how do you know he didn't say that followed by a couple of fu 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 and then the slap yeah it could happen that's true good point yeah every fantasy football league has a commissioner and that commissioner is the one that doles out the rules. So you take your beef up with the commissioner of your fantasy football team. And if the commissioner says that's legal, you're out of luck. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yep, that's true. It depends on how strong your commissioner is. I've done that true. before in my leagues where I, I bet – we bet all $100 each, right? And the winner walks away with 1000 and I saw some shady trades going on, and I went to the commissioner. And I was like, hey, this doesn't make any sense. I know this guy's out. Right. And they might be making a deal with each other that, hey, if I win the league, I'll give you half. Which okay, so so uh, let me that, – that's an interesting point. Okay, so um, my old business partner was was a fairly big gambler uh, playing blackjack in blackjack tournaments in Vegas. And it was like, you know, winner take all, a million dollars, okay? Wow. Um, and, and the cost to get into the tournament was zero. These, that's how big these guys were in gambling, that they just assumed if you're at that tournament, you're going to gamble within the casino. And a lot of times they, that happened, right? So what would happen is the guys would know each other over tournaments and they would have uh, little conglomerates of, let's say the three of us get together and say, hey, listen, if any one of us makes the, the, the finals, we all, you know, the top guy gets 40% and then, you know, 20, wow. 20 right? So... My, uh, my uh, business partner, I went to Vegas uh, with him on one of these tournaments, and his, the cards he got were so terrible, he was out in, like, the first 10 minutes of the tournament. I mean, it was, he, he just couldn't buy a hand, right? But because he was part of two different conglomerates of different betting people, and it's a gentleman's word, right? Yep. He still walked away with $80,000. Yeah, and, and what they did was when they and, – and the thing is, the way the casino works is when they paid out the million dollars – uh, they, they, they pay it out in chips and then, you know, people, they say they wash them, you know, so you bet chips and then you get money and all this kind of crap. Uh, and then it's, it's all a gentleman's thing. Okay. Here's your hundred grand. Here's your 200 grand and, and all that. So it's, uh, wow. kind of crazy. <laughs> wow. I mean, I saw him, I saw him bet one time, like, uh, when he wasn't in the tournament and he was just betting himself. 
you know, he was betting like five thousand dollars a hand, and he and a couple of times he had to split. It's like in one thing he had twenty five thousand dollars on one hand. Oh, and I, wow! I, I don't care if you're Warren Buffett. I, I, that would still make me kind of so, you know, yeah, that's a, yeah, it's yeah, a lot that, of money, that's man. That, that's big. That's big money. That's big money. All right. Uh, one one quick thing before we cut to break. Uh, anybody think Colin Kaepernick's going to make the Raiders? No. No. Then why no. is he even there? Smoke screens. There's a lot of turmoil in that organization right now, and I think. There's going to be more that's coming out of that organization. Why everyone's just leaving. There's a lot of reports of uh, employees not getting paid. A whole bunch of stuff's going on in that organization. So this is the perfect smoke and mirrors right now to show virtual sig signal that, hey. Yeah, let's redirect the attention and bring uh, in Colin Kaepernick for a tryout. Wasn't yeah, there they remain mum on, on what they thought of the tryout. And wasn't yeah. there some weird, weird stuff going on with Mark Davis? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, you just kind of look at the guy and he kind of looks like he didn't come out to shoot the right way. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you well, this. From say that. We did an interview with him at NBC yeah. and uh, he talked to one of our talent for like 15 minutes after the interview. Very nice guy. Very well. Yeah, he is. Very well, I, I'm not saying he's not a nice guy, but you just kind of look at him and you go, something's not right here. All right. Here's our third trivia question. I'm sorry. I, you know, listen. Okay. Hey, don't I, judge a book by its cover. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, right. boy, look at me. Boy, maybe he's just not good at, at running an organization. That's just, hey, look at me. That's why I'm on radio and not TV. Okay. Uh, yeah. Having lost two games, two, excuse me, having lost two and, gosh, let's try this again. Having lost games two and three of the 2015 NBA Finals, the Warriors coach made a tactical change. What player was taken out of the starting lineup starting in game four as the Warriors went to a small ball lineup. All right, that's our trivia question. Stay with us. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back with some closing comments. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn, F.P. Santangelo Jr., and Russell Jackman. Okay, guys, uh, having lost games two and three of the 2015 NBA Finals, the Warriors coach made a tactical change. What player was taken out of the starting lineup starting in game four as the Warriors went to small ball lineup? I'll, I'll, I'll try for the sweep and say Andrew Bogut. That is correct. And Bogues went out. Yeah, but who came in? Who started? Uh, I think that it was Draymond at center. And then you had, um, at that point, Iguodala yep. and uh, Clay Thompson. I think we're playing at the forward spots. Yeah, but who, who was the last player that came in? Because Zaza then Steph. I don't think Zaza was in there. No, and David Lee think, was, had already been traded. David, yeah, 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 no, David Lee was on the team, I believe. Oh wait, David, no, you're right. He he was off the team. So uh, off the Harrison team. Barnes. Harrison Barnes was the other player. Harrison Barnes, very good. All right, guys, you ready for our thoughts of the day? Wait, but first, but for, wait, yeah, I, I have to, I have to bring this up. Go ahead. I am shocked. I am shocked that Mr. Jackman did not bring up that Simone Johnson has started a pro wrestling career with the ring name of Ava Rain, fourth generation Johnson, joining pro wrestling. True. Uh, you gotta love that. That is true. <laughs> she has a long way to go. Where she's, you know, a main eventer or anything like that. Still very green and and still just getting started. But it's true. You're going to see yet another of the Johnson family uh, 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 making their way into uh, wrestling, and she'll probably be a big star, you know, probably. if the WWE has their way. All and, right. and, and 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 Edward, you brought this up top of the show about how if the Celtics win, they're going to pay 11 million dollars. And I know we're going to cover that. We're going to cover that next week. Okay. We're, we're All gonna right. For next okay. week. We're gonna cut out here. We're, we're, we're Nothing in comparison to what what the Warriors would prepare. Okay. Yeah, they pay more in luxury tax. Next week. Some okay. So get out. this. All right. So my wife said I should I should start doing lunges to get healthier. I told her, yeah, that would be a big step forward. And uh, <laughs> oh. what do you call two octopuses that look the same? Identical. All right. Tune in next oh, week. Oh, nice. nice. We'll be discussing nice. sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Good night, America. Adi